so we cleaned it up. Thousands of these arsenious gambling machines were seized, destroyed, and some yet to be destroyed, but in the custody of the police. Descending into a murky nightmare world. world. Coming to you from the unpredictable multiplayer universe. This Spartan life. With your host, Damian Lassa Damian. We're happy to bring you another episode of This Spartan Life. We are the talk show in game space. So, we are here in the middle, I guess, of the Halo video game landscape, or, or where are we? You call it the stage. Well, this is the headlong map in the online multiplayer edition of Halo 2, and we call this our stage because it's kind of become home. We, you know, this is where we make our, our talk show. This is where we begin most of our segments, and it's kind of the, the, the one thing in the entire game that looked the most like a stage. One of the things to understand about what we do is the concept of the virtual camera. I explained to Kurt that in a first-person shooter game like this, you always see the gun in front of you. But some resourceful gamers figured out a way to drop that gun, thereby giving them a clear view to record their gameplay or comedy skits that they write, or in our case, a talk show. So unlike other uh, talk shows, the talk show form that we're used to, there, there's a high degree of unpredictability here. There is a high degree of unpredictability, you know? I'm trying to clear the way for us here. These guys are, uh... <laughs> here, the corporate video game industry is suddenly being infected by rock and roll hooligans, and before we know it, we may have discovered that the intellectual vanguard is under 13. Can you imagine a world in which 13-year-olds are in control? Actually, yes, I, I can kind of imagine that. Katie, the interactive aspects of gaming seem to set it apart from other forms of entertainment media. Can you help us sort out exactly how it fits in? The biggest difference between games and other kinds of media is that they're interactive. Oh, there we go. What is probably the most fun thing about what we're doing here is that I have a chance to sort of walk around and move and make choices about where I'm going, what I'm looking at, what we're doing. Games are also rendered in real time, and in the map here you'll begin to see as we move around that there's stuff popping up all the time. Um, and that makes them very dynamic, interesting environments um, for a player to begin to respond to. And because of that, players find, find them incredibly empowering because they have a chance to make choices in these spaces, whether it's in the design of them or in the play of them. Once upon a glorious time, in a world increasingly bereft of ideas. Slack-jawed, eyes glazed over, barely able to chew their popcorn, there was always a mob on the King's Road. We set off in a rented man of war, as over our heads an entire epoch ended. To a pilot, style is just an X on a tattered map, or a piece of wreckage floating on the surface of the ocean, deep in vogue. I always loved the sound of the sprinklers. It meant our crops were growing, and with them, my dreams of someday leaving this little farm town. The farm was my future, Uncle Robert always told me. It would pay for my education in the city one day. But at some point, Uncle Robert started acting weird. He ran the sprinklers late at night, way out in the fields. From my bedroom window, I could see the mist coming up over the hill. It was lit up by a weird blue light. One night, I snuck out across the field 
In the dim moonlight, I climbed up onto the roof of the equipment shed. The blue light ran along the far edge of the field. It looked like a huge screen, about 20 feet high. The sprinklers fired sheets of water through it. Somehow the dirt on the other side was dry and cracked. I slid down off the shed roof and moved closer. From this angle, the dry dirt disappeared and now I could see wet stalks. Like some kind of crop. All along the edge of each bright red stalk, there were hundreds of tiny black fingers. Like worms, wriggling in the water that came through the screen. There must have been thousands of them, all soaking up the spray. Behind these creatures, out where the highway should have been, a huge city was being built, with the hum of hundreds more of them flying around in synchronized formations. The cricket, having sung her song all summer long, found, when the winter winds blew free, her cupboard bare as bare could be. Nothing to greet her hungering eye, no merest crumb of worm or fly.